Hi, John with eTrailer. Today, we're taking a look at and installing our Curt Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2020 Chevrolet Camaro SS. Now let's take a closer look at the hitch on our Camaro. This is a Class 1 hitch. That means the uh, opening here is an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter, and it is a reinforced collar. This is powder coated a gloss black. Um, and it's a hidden cross tube style. All you see on the Camaro is just the receiver part of this. The rest of it is tucked up behind the bumper fascia on here. It has a ring type chain hook on it. It'll accept your standard S hooks. And there's plenty of room, even if you have a heavier duty clevis style like this. Now this hitch will accept a half inch pin and clip. Now this is not included um, with the hitch. But if you need one, we have these here at eTrailer. Uh, keep in mind that if you are shopping for accessories like a cargo rack or a bike rack for the Camaro here, uh, most of those accessories will already include a pin and clip or some sort of anti-rattle device. Now speaking of accessories, let's get some measurements on the hitch and how it fits the Camaro from the ground to the top of the inside collar. We're looking at 10 and a half inches. And for the other measurement we like to get is from the center of the pinhole out to the edge of the back bumper here. And we're looking at five inches. Now these numbers are important when you're choosing accessories like say a ball mount. If you're going to do some light towing, uh, you would want one that comes out and has a rise to it. Uh, or accessories that fold up like bike racks and some cargo carriers. Uh, you want to know that when they're in the stowed position that they're not going to impact the back of your bumper. Now let's talk about some weight capacities of this class one hitch. As far as the tongue weight rating or the weight pushing down on the hitch, we're looking at 200 pounds of tongue weight rating. And if you're gonna do some light duty towing, it's 2,000 pounds gross trailer weight rating. Now that's gonna be the weight of your trailer plus anything you put in it or on it. Always check with your owner's manual on your Camaro to make sure, uh, see how much you can tow. Now, as far as installation of the Curt on the Camaro, it's really not too bad. Now, you do have to take off the rear fascia on the car, but it's not quite as bad as you think. And I will say that the directions want you to remove the tail lights, and that's not the case on this car. You do not have to remove the tail lights. Um, it is pretty straightforward. You got some fasteners that you need to remove. If you want to see how it's done, stick around. We'll show you. Now, to begin our installation, we're going to need to remove uh, three. T15 Torx screws. Now it's on each side of the car, both the driver's side and the passenger side. We're on the driver's side right now and I put some blue painter's tape in the location of where they are. Uh, they blend in really well on the inside so they're kind of hard to see but these are the locations and you're going to have three on each side. Go ahead and remove those. Take your finger and up here about the one o'clock position, you'll be able to get under the fender well, this inner wheel well liner here, and you're gonna wanna peel that back. And right here, just above the reflector, we have a seven millimeter bolt that's sticking straight up like this. So we'll access it from the bottom. We need to remove this, do this on both sides. Now with your seven millimeter socket still attached, we're going to come to the back side of the car here underneath on the bumper. You're going to have five seven millimeter bolts that need to be removed on the driver's side, five on the passenger side, and then two in the middle here. Now on the driver's side behind the rear wheel uh, by the exhaust, you're going to have two connectors that are on the bottom side here that need to come out. There's a black one and a gray one. Uh, you'll just slide the lock, the red lock back. So I've got this on the hook. I'll show you what I did here. I slid the red lock back and then you press down right here. Um, sometimes it helps to push in and then pull out on these connectors. They can get stuck um, and we get a lot of uh, dirt buildup. It makes it hard to um, unhook. Now on the passenger side, you're going to have one connector. This is for the rear backup camera. And you need to be careful when you unhook this. This is a very uh, delicate coax wire. Um, in order to unclip it, we've already unclipped it here, but in order to do that, you'll see 
on this side you're going to have a tab that you push down on it's this one right here i normally use a screwdriver or a tool um, with my thumb on top of it to do that to really push it down these are fairly difficult to get apart uh, but you can see the body of it will come out and this is the connector portion that you'll have left so if you don't see the tab on the one side just turn it around and you'll see the tab that you need to depress to unhook that now we need to remove the rear fascia in order to do that we'll lift the trunk and I got an extra set of hands I got Ryan here today and I've already taped up both sides of the quarter panels that way we do uh, scratch anything when we pull it off you're simply going to pop out and grab the bottom just kind of wiggle It'll come out like this now you still want to check make sure that we don't have any connectors and we are clear it's a lot easier to take the connectors off with the bumper still attached go ahead and set this off in a safe place now we can take a 15 millimeter socket and we're going to have four flange nuts on either side this way we're going to remove these and we're going to remove the crash bar With the flange nuts off, we can take the exhaust hangers and just slide them back. Now we don't have to support the exhaust. On the back side, there's two more hangers that support it. You want to do this on both sides, and then you could simply remove the crash bar and set it off to the side for reinstallation. Now we can take our hitch and replace it on the car and take the crash beam put that over the top and then re-secure your flange nuts now with one flange nut on both sides here now we can take our exhaust brackets and place them back over the studs and then continue tightening down your flange nuts. With the flange nuts snugged up, now we can torque these to the specs, and you'll find the specs in your installation instructions. Now with the hitch torqued, I went ahead and mocked the bumper up and then closed the trunk to kind of hold it in place while we do the next part. We're going to be trimming the very bottom of the fascia and I have a tire marker or a grease pencil and we're going to mark out the location of where we need to cut for the hitch. Now there is a diagram in the instructions uh, to give you roundabout figures on where you need to cut. I just prefer this method um, because it seems like each car is a little bit different when you go to work on it. So here's our hitch, here's the bottom of the bumper. Um, I'm going to leave just about a quarter to a half inch on either side and I can see we're going to need to come up probably two inches or so. I'd rather cut less and if I need to trim it out later we can do that as well. I'm going to take a drill bit and I'm going to drill the very corners of this uh, just for the reason that to have a rounded corner it's going to be less likely to crack in the future now the rest of this is just easy enough to cut with some aviation shears if you have a dremel tool that'll work too um, even a razor knife would work on this this stuff is pretty forgiving mock this up and see if it works for us. We just want to make sure that the fasteners can clear right here. It looks like this is going to work for us. Now we can just reinstall our fascia in the reverse order that we took it off. Remember most of the connectors that we did, we did that before, so we'll be able to reconnect them after when the bumper is attached.
Now once you've reinstalled your fascia, don't forget to hook up the two connectors on the driver's side and your video connector on the passenger side and then reattach all of your fasteners. Really, that is all there is to it to installing this hitch. And that was a look at Kurt's Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2020 Chevrolet Camaro SS.